Dog Radio, College of San Mateo. Lightning speckles the sky. A sleek white airliner streaks through the clouds, shaking intensely. Then, a lightning bolt strikes the plane. It is going down, and hail, daisy, poppy seed, flower, and Larry the chickens are sitting in the front of the plane. Chapter 1. Crashing Through the Snow Metal crashes all around them. Hale, an intelligent white feathered hen with black oval markings, is thrown against the wall of the plane. Poppy Seed, a black feathered hen with a speckled comb, and Flower, a white feathered hen with a flower shaped comb, have been licking the windows for their nutritional value and are thrown down the aisle. As you might surmise from their window-licking escapades, smartness has evaded them for most of their lives. Larry, a brown rooster with yellow oval markings, and Daisy, a yellow hen, hold onto the edges of the plane seats and each other as their claws are flailing in the air. They are lovebirds and paid extra for seats next to each other on the flight. The rest of the passengers are panicking. The plane nosedives further toward the ground, everything shaking. This was not how their Christmas vacation was meant to end, when everything was going so well. But now, they are headed for a turbulent demise, and the only thing jingling is the plane's engine. Four hours earlier. We are living like kings, says Poppy Seed. Yeah, says Flower. Hale, Daisy, Poppy Seed, Flower, and Larry have just got upgraded to first class while flying home after a fun filled holiday vacation to see their relatives. They had snowball fights, ate marvelous pies and spreads with Hale's parents and played hide-and-seek with the chicks. The day before they flew out, it started snowing. Their flight had been canceled, and they labored in the airport for five hours 
before the airlines found seats for them on another flight, this time in first class. Poppy Seed and Flower had taken the opportunity to order copious amounts of champagne, eat fancy pie, and get those little hot towels. Hale had to remind them that you are supposed to put them over your mouth, as Poppy Seed and Flower immediately started an eating competition. Daisy and Larry looked out the window in awe, gazing at the wondrous snowy landscapes. Then the captain got on over the intercom. This is your captain speaking. We are approaching a thunderstorm. We're not going to be able to fly around it, so please be advised that we are putting on the fashion seatbelt sign. Do not leave your seats for any reason, said the captain. Well, you heard the man, says Flower. Time to make minestrone in the airplane bathroom sink. Yeah, says Poppy Seed. I'll bring the soup packets and water. Wait, no, says Hale. But Poppy Seed and Flower have already unbuckled themselves and left the seat. We'll be right back. Chapter 2, More Than Turbulence? Welcome back. Hale, Daisy, Poppy Seed, Flower, and Larry are flying back from Christmas vacation, but they are approaching a thunderstorm. The captain has ordered everyone to stay in their seats, 
but poppy seed and flour have decided to make minestrone soup in the airplane bathroom. Poppy seed flour, get back here, says Hale. But poppy seed and flour have already reached the back of the plane. They open the door and squeeze themselves into the bathroom. Just then, lightning strikes the plane. The engines sputter out and the plane takes a steep dive. Ah! Says Flower from the airplane bathroom. It's gonna be okay, Flower, says Hale. Just hold on. No, our soup is too hot, says Poppy Seed. We need to lick the windows, says Flower. They will cool down our tongue. And they have great nutritional value, says Poppy Seed. Poppy Seed and Flower run out of the bathroom and crawl up the aisle. They begin licking the windows, but the plane shakes further, throwing them down the aisle and to the back of the plane. The plane keeps shaking and hurtles toward the ground. We're all gonna die, says Larry. That's what you said when the waiter was 20 minutes late with your food at TGI Fridays, says Daisy. The plane hurtles over the mountains, nearing the ground. There's an airport, says Hale. Maybe the plane can land... We'll be right back.
Chapter 3 Magnificent Desolation The plane carrying Hale, Daisy, Poppy Seed, Flower, and Larry has just crashed near an unknown airport. A blinding snowstorm is going on. Hale opens her eyes. She has been thrown from the plane and out onto the ground. She is covered in bruises. Poppy Seed and Flower are near her, and they are waking up as well. Larry and Daisy are hanging from a nearby tree, unconscious. We've got to get inside and out of the snow, says Hale. Then we'll send someone out to look for other passengers. Poppy Seed and Flower, help me grab Larry and Daisy. Poppy Seed climbs the tree and hoists Larry and Daisy out, one by one, handing them off to Flower. Hale and Flower drag Larry and Daisy across the snow and up to a shiny metal door. She tries to open it, but it is locked. Cowabunga, says Flower, as she drives Poppy Seed into the window like a battering ram. Don't do that, Flower. You could give Poppy Seed brain damage, says Hale. No, she's fine, says Flower. Yes, Mr. Salesperson, I would like to buy a reverse mortgage, says Poppy Seed. Let's just get inside and out of the snow, says Hale. Hale and Flower carry Larry and Daisy through the broken window and into the airport. Poppy Seed hobbles along beside them. They walk into a massive baggage claim area. It appears that the people in the airport left in a rush. Look, says Flower. This bag has a tag from 1957 on it. We'll be right back.
Chapter 4, The Mystery Deepens. Welcome back. The chickens have survived a plane crash and have broken into an abandoned airport. But something is seriously wrong. It appears to have been abandoned suddenly in 1957, and the reason for this is a complete mystery. We've got to solve this, Hale says. Let's split up and look for clues, Daisy says. I knew we shouldn't have binge-watched 12 hours of Scooby-Doo on the flight over, says Larry. Poppy seed and flower, you go check out the abandoned stores and restaurants on the other end of the terminal, says Hale. Me? Daisy and Larry will go check out the air traffic control tower. We won't do that, says Poppy Seed. It's too much work, says Flower. Think you do it for a Scooby snack, says Daisy. Sure, says Flower. We love dog treats. Poppy Seed and Flower run off to the abandoned food court. As soon as they are out of earshot, Hale says... That was just a diversion to get them out of our way. The only thing in that food court is moldy pizza. Which they might eat, says Daisy. Well, we can treat them for food poisoning later, says Hale. Let's head to the air traffic control tower and see if they have any information on what was happening with the flights that day. We'll be back shortly. Chapter 5. Time to go. And we return to the final chapter of our story. Will Hale, Daisy, and Larry solve the mystery? Will Poppy Seed and Flower eat moldy pizza in the food court? We return to Hale, Daisy, and Larry walking through the terminals. The light outside is fading and the hallways are dark. Larry and Daisy are casting looks over their shoulders. It's okay, you two, says Hale. What are you, scared of the dark? Larry and Daisy's teeth are chattering now. I knew we shouldn't have flown on United. We should have flown Frontier Airlines, like I said. It's all their fault, says Larry. Frontier Airlines is trash. You just like them because you're a cheapskate, says Daisy. Said the one who refused to tip at the airport restaurant we went to before we left, says Larry. Calm down, you're both cheapskates and all airlines are trash, says Hale. I'm so sick of this trip, says Daisy. Me too. I, I wish we'd never gone. I, I wish... <laughs> I'm scared. I don't want to die out here, says Larry. Me too says Daisy. I'm sorry for fighting, says Larry. Same here, says Daisy. And we're not gonna die. We'll find the answers we need in the air traffic control tower and use the radio to get out of here. Let's go, says Larry. Are we ready to go now, Hale says. They reach a door at the end of the hallway and open it. Behind it, there is a steep staircase. They clomp up the stairs, one by one, and finally open the door to the air traffic control room. <laughs> Pop 
poppy seed and flower walk down the hallway to the food court. They come upon a room full of abandoned restaurants. McDonald's, Taco Bell, KFC, Burger King, and some assorted bookstores and gift shops. What are we supposed to be doing again? Says Poppy Seed. I forgot, says Flower. I believe we have to look for Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. All right, says Poppy Seed. What does KFC serve anyways? I don't know, says Flower. Let's split up and look for clues. You take this side of the KFC, and I'll take that side. We return to Hale, Daisy, and Larry in the air traffic control tower. If only there was a way to turn the power back on, says Hale. And then we could use the radio to call for help. Look, says Daisy, there's a generator. And here's a gas can, says Larry. I think we can start it up. Larry pours gas into the generator and starts cranking it. It sputters to a start, and the power blinks back on. Hale gets on the radio. Mayday, mayday! Our plane has crashed somewhere in... Hale looks at the map on the console. Remote Siberia? How did we end up here? We were flying over Vermont. Well, I guess that's where we are. Our coordinates are 1112246666 degrees west and 4467288 degrees east. Hale turns off the speaker switch and waits for a reply. Nothing comes through. Well, we better try and figure out why this airport was abandoned, says Hale. They pour through the data on the logs books. The last entry is December 17, 1957. That must have been the date it was abandoned, Hale says. But why? They pour through the room, but they cannot find anything else to answer their question. We now return to Poppy Seed and Flower, who have been having a pool party in the decades-old deep fryer oil at KFC. says Poppy Seed. Polo, says Flower. <laughs> what should we do now? Says Poppy Seed. Let's check out the bookstore, says Flower. Sometimes they sell cool pens and erasers. Man, I used to love to eat them when I was younger. Okay, says Poppy Seed. They walk down the dark hallway and enter the bookstore. Inside, they see rows of old books from the 1950s. Man, this is boring, says Poppy Seed. Atlas Shrugged, Dandelion Wire, and The Way of Zen. Pshh, boring, says Flower. Wait, there is a newer book in the corner. They walk over and pick up the book. It is sleek, printed with yellow letters and with a plastic covering. It says, Traveling Worlds on the cover. Flower opens it up. On the first page are printed three words. Underneath it says, Read this and you will be returned to wherever you came from. I was once trapped and when I escaped, I left this book here to help others who might fall into this same peril. Poppy Seed and Flower looks at each other, and they say in unison, Time to go! There's a flash of light, and everything blacks out. Suddenly, Poppy Seed and Flower jolt awake. Hale, Daisy, and Larry surround them. What happened? says Daisy. We were in the air traffic control tower, and we blacked out and woke up here. I... I don't know, Hill says, stunned. Suddenly, someone comes walking 
up the path. It is a soot-covered firefighter wearing a green uniform with a yellow helmet, a gray oxygen mask, and carrying an axe on his back. Come on, he says. We're rescuing more people from the wreckage. We'll get you on a helicopter and airlift you out of here. But what about the abandoned airport, says Larry. There could be more people trapped there. What, what, what abandoned airport? This is Vermont. There's nothing here for hundreds of miles. But there was one, says Daisy. We were there. I, I think you might be delusional from hypothermia. Come on, get in the helicopter and we'll warm you right up. So Hale, Daisy, Poppy Seed, and Flower got up and stepped into the aircraft. Epilogue. Hale, Daisy, Poppy Seed, and Flower were airlifted to a hospital in Florida and after being treated for minor injuries and frostbite, they returned home. Well, in the hospital, they came across an old magazine. It detailed the story of a once vibrant airport in Siberia that had been completely wiped off the map by a hurricane. There were no survivors. So it was real, says Daisy. I don't know, says Hale. I don't know. When they got home, Flower brought something out from under her wing. It was a moldy pizza from the airport food court. Don't eat that, says Hale. But Poppy Seed and Flower had already dug in. And then they had to go back to the hospital to get their stomachs pumped. We'll be right back. for listening. This radio drama was written by Rudy Evenhouse. The characters were voiced by Rudy Evenhouse. The director of marketing and promotions is Georgia Chardema Evenhouse. Thanks to Mario Butzner for teaching me the podcasting class for which this radio play was written for and for providing the facilities. Thank you to CSM professor Donna Eyestone for letting me air this on KDOG Radio. And thank you to you, my listeners, for supporting me during my radio production class and for coming back for this new radio play. Good night. And you're listening to K-Dog Radio, College of San Mateo.